So this video session is going to focus on some advice from some of our senior academic gastroenterologists on some tips for us younger trainees on how we can advance our academic careers most quickly. So I'm joined today by Dr. Magnus Simran and Dr. Jakob Fikna, who have kindly agreed to give us some tips for success. So I'll start with our first question then. So Jakob has helped us by writing a paper for the Young GI Angle on how to choose your PhD correctly in terms of choosing a good mentor, choosing a good center, and choosing a topic that you're really comfortable with and enjoy. Moving on from your basic PhD qualification and hopefully the publications you'll get during that training, what other things can we acquire during our PhD training that'll really make us stand out from other candidates when we're applying for jobs and grants then? I think uh, ga gaining knowledge in some kind of specific technique, that's quite valuable if you apply for, uh, for, for a postdoc position that you can show that you really know something really well. I think that's something that you can, you can gain from uh, when you apply in, 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 in a po at the postdoc level. And also another thing that is a little bit odd perhaps to, to say, but I think it's important to really show that you're a team player because science today is not a one-man show, it's a teamwork. So to show in some, some way that you're a team player, that's something that I rank very highly when I look at applications. Okay. So be a team player, that's okay. good. Don't work on your own. Very good. Yeah, I would like to elaborate on this idea. You have to know how to make friends, friendship, and how to make collaborations. Otherwise, you will get lost because you will be all alone in science. And if you know how to interact with people, then you'll know how to um, behave, let's say, how mm -hmm. to work in the lab. OK. But also in the clinics, yeah. right? So practice your social mm -hmm. skills. Okay. Yeah. Don't just <laughs> social and, yeah. social don't, and don't scientific be, skills. Yes, don't yeah. be weird. No. Okay. <laughs> so then, moving on to our next question then. Obviously, you've both managed to jump over a lot of hurdles and, and have progressed both of your academic careers very well. If you were to start at our stage again, can you give us any tips of things that maybe went wrong that you would have done differently at an earlier stage and helped your careers to advance more smoothly, perhaps? Um, I don't think I regret much what I've done, but uh, of course there are some small steps that you can make, make different. But, um, it's difficult to plan that in advance, actually. And you need to follow uh, where the possibilities come. I mean, if there you have a possibility and you th think that something looks interesting and you have a me good mentor, follow that mentor and uh, try to work with him or her. Uh, okay. So I think it's a little bit about gut feeling. Okay. Uh, it's difficult to give uh, advice what to do and what not to do. Mm -hmm. Uh, follow your instincts, follow your gut feeling. That's something that you should do. Okay. Don't be too tactical. I don't think you should yes. do that. I don't yes. think you should do that. Okay. That can be quite harmful in the end, I think. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's a good. That's advice. my experience anyway. Yes. Okay. Exactly. Don't think about just money, just fellowships, and just, let's say, financial profit out of your career. Uh, think about the expertise that you may get. Okay. Think about the soft skills that you will never get if you just think about this very practical uh, uses of what you may get uh, from, from any grants or, or any fellowships. Also, what again, I would like to um, you know, continue as, as an idea. Uh, that's the Magnus idea of uh, finding a good mentor. Yes. Uh, I think if, if you are lucky or if you manage to find a good mentor, then you will definitely have a good start, a much better start, much easier start mm -hmm. uh, for the rest of the career. So putting in a lot of work before undertaking your PhD so that you have a good mentor, a good center, things like that will make a big difference. Yes, then. that's right. But of course, we quite often it's not possible just to select the best mentor mm -hmm. right away. No. We have to start from, you know, with very small steps. We, we just try to work with the mentor. If we are happy, let's continue the collaboration. If we are not happy because it may also be possible, mm -hmm. let's find another one. But this doesn't have to be the mentor just for half a day or half a year. Let's try to think more with the perspective of five, ten years. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and and I think it's the, the, it's more important that you get along with your mentor than yeah. that than the mentor being a very senior, very okay. prominent guy, girl. Uh, I think it's more important that you um, that you really like working with that mentor. And you're happy in your work. Yeah, that that's. Will show. Yeah. yeah, it's also important that the mentor likes 
working with you. Of course. So it's of a course. you know bilateral collaboration. Course, it's not yes. just a one way street. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think that moves us on nicely to my next question then. Perhaps an issue that we're always concerned about is how to move on forward with your career then when you've had such a good relationship with your mentor and there comes a time that you need to become more independent. Is there a way to keep things very friendly with your mentor while also becoming a little bit more independent or do you have to sacrifice relationships at some point? Have you had difficulties like that yourselves along the way? I haven't had any difficulties like okay. that, and I think um, it's often not uh, com you're not competing um, of the same grounds, or is no. you're at mo still you're at different levels most yeah. of the time. And you can still be friends even if you compete. I mm -hmm. think that's very important. If you uh, if you will become enemy with everyone you compete against, then you will be have a very lousy life. I think. Yeah, I think I will say something very unpopular. But if you found a wise mentor, he or she will let you go and will let you. Yeah have the career. Yes, okay, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> and then our, our, my next question was about how to keep things friendly then with your peers. So you've mentioned, Magnus, that people can get along at, at all levels, really. But I think it is an, an awkward issue for, for us thinking about competing maybe with our friends for grants mm. and how to be happy for somebody who's successful when you're not. It's, it's, it's a difficult issue that we have. but. Mm. I suppose trying to be friendly along yeah. all, all ways. And you will not always win. You will lose no. sometimes, and that's yes. that's something you learn to have to learn to live with. Uh, mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's part of this uh, uh, accepting that others sometimes will be sometimes will beat you, but the next time you will beat them. So okay. so you have to think in a positive way even when you lose sometimes. Yes. <laughs> but it's it's not easy. But that's mm -hmm. I think that's to keep up the good spirit. I think that's that's what you need to aim for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it also nicely refers to the beginning of our conversation that actually if you learn how to have those social skills, yes. you will actually manage with your mm. peers because sometimes they will be better, sometimes you will be better, but you always create a team. So if you create a team, the, the, the members of the team support each other mm -hmm. because you have to be stronger. You are stronger when you help each other and when you collaborate. It's not when you compete. Yeah. Uh, competing is good when you want to go further. Of course, it's very important, but you cannot be over ambitious. You cannot be too, um, too willing to, to win because it will just destroy you. I think one, one, th one thing that has helped me quite a lot over the years is to uh, have some kind of collaboration with, with um, scientists at more or less at the same level as I am. Because sometimes I'm more successful, and I, then I can support them with my money. Yes. Then a couple of years later, I'm mm -hmm. not as successful, and then they support me. So, yes. So I think collaborating also with people at the same level okay. uh, when it comes mm -hmm. to funding. So, uh, so it's not just up to you. You 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 have a network where you where you collaborate, okay. and also about funding. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's a very good outlook to have on it because I think some people often think that academics spend their time in the laboratory and perhaps mm. are not collaborating or socializing or creating relationships. So it's, it's an important point for us to know that that is a very important part of academic medicine as well. Yeah, yeah that's right. But also choose your collaborators that you supervise wisely mm. yeah. because they will support you, they will work for you, you will work for yes. them. Yeah. And this will be also a very nice exchange of ideas, thoughts, but also of the mm. results, data, and even the money support yeah. as well. Yeah. Okay, so put some work into creating relationships and then Your own the benefits team. will be ongoing then mm. in the longer term. Okay, very good. And then finally, academic medicine can be more challenging, I think, and demanding time-wise particularly it can often eat into your evenings when you're home from, from clinical work as well. Has it been difficult for you to balance having family, social life, clinical work, and your academic medicine as well? Yeah, it's not easy to get that balance, but you need to think about how to get that balance mm -hmm. in some way. And you need to know that you cannot do everything all the time. All at once. Some, t some, some periods of life you focus on one or two things, and then you may sacrifice some things, but okay. then you need to catch up later and put these uh, things into focus so you can, fo so you can focus on these things instead. Uh, so I think it's uh, up, up and down a little bit. You need to prioritize what you do right now, but you, do, you shouldn't do the same prioritization your whole life. Okay. 
and you need to keep think about how to get this uh, balance in a correct way uh, so it doesn't affect your family too much. Yes. Uh, family always comes first, of course, yes. and I think that's important to keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. And find a good hobby. Yeah, a if, good hobby. Uh, if research lets you down, yeah, then yeah. you will always have yeah, a yeah. side part of your life that uh, will Something make you happy yeah. and make you kind of relaxed uh, because otherwise you will be concentrating too much, too much focusing on your work. Yes. And you cannot um, get a good life when you jump just from work to work. It has to be work, family and private life. Yeah. It's something to release the stress then of, of, course. The, yeah. of the academic. Yeah. Endorphins are good for you. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. Okay. Well, thank you both very much for your for your advice and great tips. I think it's been very revealing to see that academic medicine isn't all about papers and laboratory and that there's a huge importance to creating good relationships and collaborations and that that's what's really going to advance your career in the longer term. So that's great for us to know at a very early stage and we can develop that. And UEG Week, I think, is a great platform for us to start that and, and build and move forward from it. So hopefully we can put it into action. Thank you both very much for your time. Yep. Good Thank luck. You. Yeah. Thank good you. Luck. <laughs>